Welcome to Startup Hack. Today we'll be continuing our series on coding for entrepreneurs. I'm a startup founder and a developer and I know the perfect balance between the two. So I'm doing a series of coding tutorials that includes easy projects to start up to make it easier for you to start your business and build the things you need. Or if you're just learning so that you can more efficiently manage developers and or contractors, great. No matter what the reason that you're learning to code, I know that it will only make your business better. So let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Startup Hack. My name is Spencer Tomlinson. I am the CEO and co-founder of Clean Router, as well as many other products. Here are some lessons that I've learned building a successful business while challenging startup norms. My challenge is to push you to rethink startup success. Welcome to Startup Hack. All right, let's go ahead and dig in and go to our full screen here. So today's uh, today's example is going to be a little interesting because we're going to have to um, actually run two different versions of Visual Studio. So I'm going to be bouncing back and forth between two different versions of Visual Studio. So you may see me uh, bounce between both. And, uh, and that's because we're running both the server as well as the client each time. So... Um, Okay, so we're going to first start off and talk through the server. And so you'll see that I have one of these. Uh, so it may not appear like it, but you can see as I'm bouncing between the two versions, I have two instances of Visual Studio open. So you can see both of those two that I have open. But one of them I, I have selected. So I've right-clicked and set a startup project on the server. And then the other one, I have the startup project set up as a client. Now, it's important that you start the, the server first because otherwise the very first thing the client tries to do is make a connection to the server. So if you start the client before the server, it'll crash. But we're uh, going to avoid that. We'll just start the server first. So we'll go through some of that. But let's run through some of the coding examples here. So you can see there's not a lot to uh, our program here. So similar to like our minimal web API, the using GDRP, uh, GDRPC is an easy uh Thing to get started and we can start with very minimally. So in this tutorial we're going to show you how to create a .NET Core GRPC uh, client and an ASP.NET Core GRPC server. Sorry that's a tongue twister. At the end you'll have a GRPC um, client that communicates with the GRPC greeting server. So we're going to create both the server and the client. So on this side, you can see that we create we we use our builder to create it. We add G, grpc, which uh, you know is obviously a tongue to, tongue twister. And grpc, in case you're wondering, stands for um, high performance remote procedure call. So an RPC is a remote procedure call, and grpc is a language. It, so it's language agnostic, and it's the and, and so it's G for the um, open source. Uh, RPC um, language. And so this is an open source language agnostic uh, service that we can use to talk between a client and a server application. So if you're building a client server application, this is going to be a really simple uh, explanation for you to get started. So you can see that we add the gRPC service, which comes out of the box with .NET Core, which is super awesome and fantastic. Uh, we build the app. We then are going to map to the service for the greeter service. So let's go take a look at that. So we have our uh, greeter service, which we just inject the logger so that we can always use our logging because we definitely always need to log our applications. And then we have our say hello. Um, and so the very first thing that it does is write uh, writes it so we can see where it's happening. Then we get the hello request and then we send a message back and return the message for hello reply. So the, obviously very minimalist uh, you know, for our example here. But really, it's just these two files that we're working with. We also do have uh, this, which is the contract, the prototype um, that we're using between the two, um, uh, between the two, the node and the server. So this becomes an important uh, piece. And so when you're installing this, you're going to need to make sure that you also install uh, your RPC um, uh, in the dependencies. You're going to need to make sure that you install your gRPC. Um, dependency. So now we need to create a protos folder and that's where this protos comes from and then from that we create the greet.proto file from the grpc greet folder into the protos folder in the grpc client. So we need to make sure that this matches on both sides. So uh, this is important that it matches on both sides 
um, because, and so you can see on our client app, it's the same thing, because this is actually the protocol that it's using to talk back and forth. So this will be, you know, so if you're going to use client and server, you need to make sure that they uh, can communicate in the same language. And this is essentially the language that they're going to do. So you can see that we list out the syntax as Proto3, and then we give it a C-sharp name, which is, you know, currently, you know, the name of our project, so you see server and, and uh, client. And then we have the package of greet, and, uh, and we go from there. So then the two can communicate using this prototype uh, to each other. So... Uh, as the as these run, you can run against each other, and um, they will actually generate the class and then send it back and forth. So um, so that's on the server side. So let's go over and look at the client side here. So on the client side, we really have very minimal. All it does is it creates the address, and so this you might need to modify depending on if your server starts up. Mine dynamically came to this address. Then you create a channel and you use the the greet. Uh, the greeter client. So uh, let's go to the definition there. So our greeter greeter client. This is um, uh, this is uh, dynamically generated, and so these are dynamically generated uh, as you create, you know, as you map to this channel here. So you see that it creates the channel, and then after it's creating the channel, we call the client's hello world uh, hello async method uh, method here. So it's going to call this in a new hello request. It's then going to say greeting, and it's going to send the, the message, and then you'll press any key to exit, right? So let's go ahead and get these programs started, and let's test these guys out. So again, like I said at the front of the of the uh, video here, we're going to start off by running the server. The, yeah, we got to start off the server first. So we're going to kick off the server here. And we're going to show a working example. And then we will uh, do some debugging. So this is going to start at my console app. You can see that it uh, runs to, and you can see here uh, which uh, so that it's so that now it's listening on port 70, uh, 71, 7114. Um, then let's go back over to the other version uh, to the other instance of Visual Studio, and let's fire up this guy. Now currently our application is going to run once and hit to the end. So you can see that it says greeting, hello, greeter, client. So it set this over, and this responded back. So we can go look at our server here, and we can see that the server, the service got called. So on our server side, um, so on the server side here, we can see that it got hit. Oh, we still have the client open here. We're in the wrong instance. See, this is where it gets really crazy. So on the server side, you can see here that it'll say hello, and send the message. You see that the service got called, it runs the, the console, and you see that these two then communicated back and forth. So you see the service got called, then it sent it back and sent hello, and then see the name from the greeter client. So why don't we work on extending our project here just a little bit, because this is kind of boring. So let's uh, go to the client instance, and let's actually have it send something a little more interesting. So it'll say greeting, and then what we're going to do... Okay, now you can see our example, and we've extended this a little bit more here now. So you can see that we've added an input where we're going to read from the read line and grab our input. We're then going to create a second hello async, and this one we're going to pass in our input, get a second reply, and then we'll send out the reply of message two here, and then allow it to exit. So let's go ahead and get our program started here and get started. I've also added a breakpoint to our program to our server side. So like I said before, get our server uh, up and running first here, and we'll set this guy over here for a second. Then we're gonna go back over here, fire this guy up. And let's go ahead and get these uh, both up here. So now we're actually at the breakpoint of the server. So you can actually look at the request here. So let's take a look at our request. So you can see. That it's got some unknown fields. It has a name field, which is the view is for greet, uh, greet client. And so this was the original code that we had. So we let this guy run. You see that it says, hey, greetings from the hello client. And we look at our server and it says server called. Now we have another breakpoint over on our client side. So you can see generally having this on two monitors is really helpful. In this case, I can really only share one monitor in the video. So 
Uh, but in general, I highly recommend as developers, I would actually, I actually make sure that all of my developers always have two monitors because it simply isn't just a waste of time to only have one monitor for the very reason that you see me here going bouncing back and forth. So at any rate, uh, I hit F10 to step through this. Um, this is going to then come back. And, uh, and we will have run there. And I noticed this, I had this one, one other time too where the application hung. So I think we're getting to some kind of a race condition where something's waiting and something's trying to send. So uh, I think what we'll do here then is uh, kill all of our breakpoints and we'll start this again. So now I'm actually not gonna restart the server. I'm gonna leave the server running and I'm gonna just kill the client. So now if I restart the client again here, and this time I'm going to get rid of all my breakpoints just so we can see it run. Um, so I'm leaving the server running here and firing up the client again. So this time it looks like it's my server that actually is hung. So let's go ahead and uh, kill off both of them because now the client's going to fail. Yep, see the client just threw an error because it couldn't reach the server. So let's try this one more time. So this time with all of our breakpoints off, let's fire up the server. Okay, we got that guy up and running. Let's go ahead and fire up our client. Get that guy up and running. Now, we can see now that it's hit both of these. And what it's doing now is it's waiting because we're waiting for that input, right? We're waiting for this input line uh, to come from the console. So if I say... Uh, startup hack is the best. Like and subscribe. Let's see if the ampersand breaks something. So look at that. It fired over here. We see it fire. The service was called over here, and it came all the way back and said, "Hello, startup hack is the best." So like and subscribe. So make sure that you follow that and like and subscribe. Uh, make sure you also get your kids protected with Clean Router as well as the. Uh, clean phone. It's a fantastic product and make sure that um, you know your kids are all all safe as they're going through summer. I know that as parents we have a lot of different things going on. So make sure you go to cleanrouter.com as well as cleanphone.info and uh, grab your products today so that you can make sure that your kids are all safe and protected. Um, it's a fantastic app that allows you to manage exactly what your kids are seeing on their phones. This is an app that we've used in our home for a long time. Also make sure that you use Clean Router so that your Wi-Fi is connected, uh, so that your kids are safe. And uh, like and subscribe to our channel. We're going to continue to bring you more coding samples, and so make sure that you follow us here. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks.